Good afternoon, and welcome to our series of webinars focused on bringing you information about COVID-19 related topics. The information in these weekly webinars is geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who is interested to attend. Today, we will be talking about using the SBAR communication technique in infection control. Everyone will be on mute, but we encourage you to ask questions or leave comments for our discussion at the end of this webinar. You can submit them using either the chat or the Q&A tool in your Zoom menu. We encourage you to join us every Tuesday at 2 p.m. For, for more of our weekly webinars. Next week, we will be discussing recent updates from the National Healthcare Safety Network. My name is Kathy Caudill. I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. And now I would like to introduce our guest today, Patty Austin. Patty is a quality improvement specialist at Quality Insights. She has been working in the skilled nursing arena for the past 29 years. After starting her career as a nursing assistant and leaving the front lines as a director of nursing, the variety of perspectives that Patty has enables her to see the big picture that helps nursing facilities create lasting change within their communities. Patty has been with Quality Insights since 2016, and she considers it a privilege to be able to interact with so many different facilities on a variety of topics each day. Patty, uh, thank you for joining us today. Let me turn your mic on again. Here we go. Thank you, Kathy. And Patty's got her screen shared for us. Hi, okay. everyone. So glad everybody is here again with me today to talk about the SBAR tool. It is a tool that kind of took me a little bit of time to um, fall in love with, but then I did. So I am quite passionate about its use and um, the benefits that it can bring to your facility. So let's take a look at what we have going on. So as far the purpose of it and the importance of it is it can assist you in standardizing your communication techniques. What is an SBAR exactly? That stands for Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. And it's a communication technique that was designed to convey a message in a very concise manner, especially those messages that require immediate attention. So with SBAR as the expectation, communication then becomes very streamlined and systematic, and that allows less room for human error. There are just a ton of advantages to using the SBAR technique in the facility. Some of the more obvious reasons include decreasing potentially avoidable adverse events, things like ER trips and falls or unnecessary medications. But just as important are those benefits that don't automatically spring to mind when you're thinking about the power of SBAR. Things like enabling healthcare team members within your facility to communicate more effectively. It really helps with promoting collaboration between team members. You can even use it with residents and families and help ensure that those small details that can be overlooked are kind of brought right to the forefront and not able to fall through the cracks. So for those and many other reasons, SBAR has been considered the best practice for communication for quite some time. It's been proven to reduce serious adverse events and unanticipated death when consistently used. And it also has been proven to increase the perception of effective communication and collaboration which then empowers your team, <coughs> excuse me, which then empowers your team. The standardization of the communication process itself promotes effective, accurate, clear messaging. So who exactly should use that SBAR? The format can be used anytime it's important to convey a message to another person. Although it was originally designed to assist in standardizing nurse to physician communication, it's also a really effective tool to use for interdisciplinary communication. Things like therapist to nurse, 
communication between various positions within the nursing department, such as nursing assistant to charge nurse, and even communicating between nursing staff and residents or charge nurse and families, all can benefit from this technique. Again, anytime a clear message needs to be conveyed, it is the right time to use SBAR. The original intent was to kind of convey a change in condition. And you would use that technique between healthcare providers. So if you were calling the physician to let him know that Mrs. Jones had fallen, you might use an SBAR. However, that is far from the only time that that technique should be used. A great area to implement the SBAR within your facility is during interdisciplinary communication. Often terminology is slightly different between those disciplines and education levels can be very different between positions in the facility. Using that standardized communication technique can help you to ensure that the message is conveyed in the way that it's intended to be conveyed. The person on the receiving end of the message also understands the format, and they're then prompted to request clarification if part of the message is missing or unclear. Think about times like nurse to nurse shift reports or nursing assistant to nurse changing condition reporting. Interdisciplinary communication like therapy to nursing. Even nursing to family communication can be refined by following the technique. So how does it work? It's really super easy. The acronym itself guides you in its use. S stands for situation. What is happening that causes the need for the communication? B is for background. This is where you put the current situation into context. A is for assessment. You are the person with the eyes on the situation. This is your opportunity to tell the person that you're talking with what you're seeing and what you think is causing the issue. And then R is for recommendation. This is when you get to suggest what you're hoping to gain from the conversation. We're gonna take a look at the SBAR in action in just a couple of minutes. If your facility is unfamiliar with the SBAR technique, AHRQ has a really good toolkit that will help you to understand the implementation of SBAR as it relates to one of our hottest topics, and that's UTIs. They are one of the most commonly assessed and communicated areas in our facilities. They require careful assessment, thoughtful communication in order to identify a true UTI and avoid potentially avoidable medications and ER trips. The toolkit that I'm referring to includes things like letters to clinicians to let them know what your goal is and what your expectation is, nurse education, an SBAR that's designed specifically for UTIs, and a very comprehensive SBAR for UTI implementation lesson plan. I'll post the link for that at the end of our talk today, and I think Kathy's going to drop it into chat as well. Remember that SBAR should be used in any communication that requires urgent attention or the need to ensure that a message is clearly received. So let's take a little look at what that might look like. One of the key players in the scenario we're gonna review is the nursing assistant. They're often the very first people to identify those subtle changes in condition that when identified early can prevent serious adverse events. It's for these reasons that you might consider education on SBAR for frontline caregivers a real priority. Today, our nursing assistant has been educated on SBAR and she understands the importance of communicating clearly, especially when it comes to changes in condition. She knows her residents very well, and it's important to her to ensure that the nurse understands her concerns. She's also very recently been provided with education on antibiotic stewardship, further empowering her to advocate for her resident. 
So Lisa takes care of Mrs. McKee five days a week. They've known each other since Mrs. McKee was admitted almost two years ago, and they formed a very close relationship. Mrs. McKee's daughter, Sandy, has also grown to know and trust the CNA, Lisa. Lisa's picking up Mrs. McKee's lunch tray as Sandy, the daughter, arrives for her weekly visit. Mrs. McKee is sitting in her wheelchair and the three, three women talk for a few minutes. Mrs. McKee is her normal chatty self, but both Lisa and Sandy notice that she seems a little bit confused during a conversation about an upcoming family gathering that she's really been looking forward to. The conversation is brought to a close when Mrs. McKee asks Lisa to help her to the bathroom. On the way to the bathroom, Mrs. McKee tells Lisa, oh no, it's too late, I had an accident. And you know what, that's really unusual for Mrs. Key. But Lisa tells her, don't worry about it and completes the bathroom trip and the ADL assistance required. As they exit the bathroom, the activities department comes to pick Mrs. McKee up for bingo. And if there is one thing that Mrs. McKee loves, it is bingo. She waits for it every day after lunch, but for some reason, she seems a little bit surprised about it today. As she leaves with activities, Lisa and Sandy talk about how unusual an accident is for Mrs. McKee. They refer back to the slight confusion during the earlier conversation. And Lisa mentions that Mrs. McKee's appetite has been a little different for the last two days as well. She didn't even eat the apple pie that was yesterday's lunch dessert, and that is her favorite. The women agree that something is just not right these last couple of days. Lisa tells Sandy that she'll let the nurse know. So when Lisa approaches the nurse, she remembers the SBAR acronym. Talking to the nurse in this way is starting to become second nature for her. So she remembers that the first thing she needs to do is to tell the nurse what the situation is, what happened that made her feel that she needed to communicate something about this resident. She says, Nurse Nancy, I would like to talk to you about some changes I've noticed with Mrs. McKee over the last two days. She was incontinent of bladder after lunch and that never happens. Also, her appetite has been off and she seems just a little bit confused today. Lisa then knows that she takes care of many residents who are incontinent at times and slight confusion is not unusual for lots of people. She needs to put these events into context for her nurse by providing some background. So she tells the nurse, Nancy, I've known Miss McKee for a couple of years and she is normally very oriented, totally continent and eats 100% of all of breakfast and lunch. Her daughter was in today and also noticed that she doesn't seem to be herself. Lisa realizes that she needs to tell her nurse what she thinks about the events she's reporting by giving her assessment of the situation in the background. The last time, that this happened and Mrs. McKee was incontinent was when she had a UTI. I remember that because she fell. And now Lisa is also comfortable in offering suggestions during the communication. She used to feel that it wasn't her job and that her suggestions wouldn't matter. Because this is part of the SBAR tool, she now feels empowered to share what she thinks might need to happen in this case. Do you think I should try to maybe get her to drink some more water or do you think you should let the doctor know? This interaction then prompts the nurse to evaluate Ms. McKee and maybe implement the SBAR for UTI tool that we talked about a little bit ago. She has also been prompted by Lisa's recommendations to ask for the INO sheets from dietary and she asks Lisa if Mrs. McKee has been drinking normally. She tells Lisa she'll visit Mrs. McKee and let her know what the next steps are. And really, that's an SBAR in action, message sent and message received. But let's take a quick look at another tool 
It is great when your staff feels that maybe the message that they're trying to send is not being received. That tool is also re often referred to as the cuss technique. So what happens if the S4 message is not received? Let's assume that nurse Nancy has a very different response for our nursing assistant, Lisa. Maybe she's in a rush and nurse Nancy thanks Lisa for the report and tells her, you know what, keep your eye out for any other changes, but I don't think it's really time to bother the doctor right now. After all, it's just one incontinent episode, really. Everybody gets mixed up from time to time and, you know, maybe she just hasn't been hungry for a couple of days. Nothing to worry about. Just keep your eyes open. So Lisa may not be comfortable with Nurse Nancy's response, but she does know that it's her responsibility to be sure that the nurse understands her concern. She decides to use the CUSS method to be sure that she has communicated the situation to the nurse. She says, Nurse Nancy, I am concerned that Mrs. McKee is having new confusion, incontinence, and decreased appetite. I am uncomfortable just keeping an eye on her without someone taking a closer look. It may be a safety issue if she has another UTI and falls again. So CUS stands for telling the person that you're speaking with what you're concerned about, what is making you uncomfortable, and why you feel that that is a safety issue. Nurse Nancy now understands that this is an important message and, that, and she will assess Mrs. McKee using the s bar for uti tool. What I really love about this whole scenario is that the nurse would then use the same technique, s bar technique, to contact the physician. And again, the same technique would be used if she needed to talk with Mrs. McKee, ugh, Mrs. McKee's daughter about the situation. Once the concept is accepted, it can really become kind of second nature um, for your facility and the way that they communicate with one another. So, <coughs> excuse me again, before I flip to our resource page and see if anyone has any questions out there. One of the things that can um, become a question when you're beginning to implement this process within your facility is this is just another form to fill out. We don't have time to fill out another form. And the SBAR tool is a form that allows you to document the situation, background assessment, and recommendation right on the tool. And there are times where you may always want to use the tool. Things like communications with physicians, it might be your policy to always use that SBAR and have it become part of the medical record. There will be instances where the tool is imperative. However, during communications like we just reviewed between the nursing assistant and the nurse on duty, the tool is not necessary. You may want to consider a shortened version of that tool just as a trigger point while your staff is becoming oriented to the process. But I think you will also be surprised at how quickly they will kind of fall into the flow of using the rhythm of the SBAR and know that they are presenting facts, providing context, telling you what they think is happening, and then telling you what they're hoping to gain from the situation. Because really, as far sounds fancy, but that's what it amounts to. This is what's happening. This is why it needs brought to your attention. This is what I think is causing it. And this is what I hope to gain from this. And um, once people are empowered to use that type of tool, I think that you might be surprised at how quickly they um, fall in love with it, just like I did. So let's take a look at the link to grab that SBAR UTI toolkit. Um, this is the website you'll be able to find that kit on. And if you're looking for the Raise the Bar SBAR tool shed at the beginning of this presentation, it can be found on our Quality Insights website. I think Kathy dropped that 
into the chat as well. And for right now, I'm going to turn it back over to Kathy and see if we have any questions. All right, yes, I dropped the link that's on the screen in the chat and I have dropped the link to that guide that you had up at the beginning of the presentation in the chat. But you know what, I'll drop it in again. That way, if anyone came in a bit later, they'll be able to see that. Okay, awesome. So we can start our Q&A here in a moment. Um, everyone, if you have a question about SBAR or any other questions for Patty, you can send them to, send them to us using either the Q&A or the chat tool. It will probably take a few minutes for people to give us their questions. While we're waiting, I'd again like to uh, remind everyone that next week's webinar, we will be discussing recent updates from NHSN and to invite you to join us again next week. That'll be next Wednesday at 2 p.m. And if you have any questions about uh, on these topics, but prefer to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, we invite you to join us during our office hours. Twice a week, we host a special chat room where one of our quality improvement specialists is on standby to answer your questions. That's every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and every Thursday at 2 p.m. And if you'd like to go to those office hours, you can find the links in the newsletter we send out each week called the Last Minute Lowdown that goes out every Friday. Um, if you don't think you're on that mailing list, you can send me an email and I can get you on the list. Or if you think you're on the list, but you're not getting them in your inbox, I can help you troubleshoot that too. My email is ccaudill at qualityinsights.org. And here in a moment, I will put my email plus Patty's in the chat in case anyone needs to get in touch with us. And so far, I'm not seeing any questions. So we might give it another moment. You know what? I actually am I'm sitting here reflecting on S bar, and there was something else that I thought was um, maybe interesting to share. For those of you on the call that were nurses or are nurses, remember those first few phone calls that you had to make to a physician and how uncomfortable that could feel and how you could kind of sense their um, comfort level coming right through that phone line to you. This tool can also help eliminate that. The physicians know what to expect when they're being called from your facility. And your nurses don't have to be concerned with overstepping their bounds when they are providing their own assessment and their own recommendation to the physician. At least for me, that was the hardest thing for me to become comfortable with is letting that doctor know, hey, I'm telling you this, and this is really what I'd like to see happen from it. And the doctors are looking for that guidance in many circumstances. You're the one with the eyes on the patient. And I think SBAR is excellent at helping to kind of smooth that way. All right, so it looks like we don't have any questions so far. Do you have anything else you'd like to say, Patty? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> But I think we could probably give everybody a couple of extra minutes um, in their day. Anybody who wants to talk about SBAR, you feel free to let me know and we can talk for a good while longer. That's right. So I dropped the, the email for Patty and myself in the chat if anyone wants to get in touch with us following this webinar. You can also contact Patty, Penny, Patty directly at one 800 642 8686 at extension 7633. Is that the right one for you, Patty? Yep. They try to double check them just in case. Uh, That's it. And of course, you can email her at paustin at qualityinsights.org. That's P A U S T I N at qualityinsights.org. And it looks like we're not getting any questions today. So if you would like, Patty, oh, wait, we got one quick thing. Someone said, thanks for the great info. And perfect example from early nursing days. I remember that uh, that feeling well, and I'm a seasoned nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. All right. Not getting any questions though. So I think we can go ahead and wrap up. We'll have a lot more resources for SBAR coming. So we'll be sharing those uh, in the future. All right. Thank you, Patty. I'll go ahead and wrap up this webinar if that's all right with you. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming. Patty, thank you for coming and joining us again.